Hi guys, how are you? It is Dr. Pam and thanks for hanging out with me for just a quick minute. I want to talk about Margaret Mather tonight. So Margaret Mather is object constancy, which is different than object permanency. Object permanency belongs to Piaget. And what that means is after five months, babies are going to look for the ball. You see that pick a big question all the time, right? Oh my gosh, here you are. So prior to that, they really think that they, um, the ball is gone. However, what I want to look at tonight really has to do with uh, Margaret Mailer and her object constancy theory. So what Margaret Mailer said was that if we don't bond, if we don't have that relationship with that one person, that one thing um, between the ages of two and three, then we're in trouble for the rest of our lives. So Margaret Mailer, she's been around for a long time. She is considered a Freudian because she believed the unconscious was really important. She also believed that that object, the under the constancy was something unconscious. So you do have to know her sagers. And if you're watching this video and you're not a test taker, there's a whole lot more than Margaret Mailer. But remember at Academic Coaching for World Changers, our goal is to help clients pass the test. So we really only teach to the test. So her stages that you need to know, that first one is autism. That's one to two months, usually the first month of life. Sometimes you might also see it called a fusion where the baby just lays there or is attached. He doesn't realize anything at this point. He's just kind of like laying there. And remember, Margaret Mather had that term autism or autistic prior to any of those other diagnoses. So the next stage she talked about was then between four and five months. Um, depending on what source you use, sometimes it's two months, three months. But in that time, the babies realize that they need this thing to live. So symbiosis, right? Remember that I, I, I need this thing. So the moss that grows on the tree, right? I, I know that I need this thing to live. Um, and then separation, individuation, and differentiation happens between five and seven months. So we will see five to 36 months. That's the whole process. But most often between five and seven months, babies realize they're a separate person. Like, oh my gosh, like they're bottle feeding or breastfeeding. They look up and like, oh, wait, wait I'm here and she's there. So that really is when babies, the first time they realize they're a separate person from their mom separation, individuation, differentiation, you might see all of those terms. So then the goal at that point is now that I realize that I'm separate, I am learning to then live as a separate person. So um, I don't always teach the practicing period. I do teach reproachment. Reproachment is between 16 and 24 months. I usually say about 18 months. And the question may look like the baby's kind of go further away. He's walking now, right? So further away from mom, but he's going to look around to make sure mom is still watching. So he might uh, go to the other room, but he's not going to go there very long because wait, where's mom? The goal is that um, between two and three, he'll learn that no matter where he goes, that mom is going to be there. That's an unconscious feeling. It's an unconscious awareness, according to Mailer. Um, so what that means is that kids can do anything anywhere because they know they'll always have a safe base or a safe place to land. I'll always say I did a really good job with that because my children love to travel the world. And no matter what happens, they know that mom's got their back. So I'm going to say I did a pretty good job with that. So remember, object constancy is knowing unconsciously that someone has always got your back. Um, so what she said, though, is that if you did not um, have that, if that didn't develop, that you really could have some serious problems. So she said this theory was based on children living in orphanages, right? In the early 1900s so a lot different than than where we are now and this is like 2022 when you're watching this video um so the goal was back then she realized that babies that had numerous caregivers um didn't have that they might have had the food the 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 diaper change but things like that but they didn't have that one person or that one consistent object to bond with um, if you look now today uh, i've worked with a lot of teen parents in my my former life and my former professions um, and, and even young parents. 
So what happens many times is I'm 17, 18, 19, 20, and I have a baby and I'm trying to finish school. And so that first month of life, right, uh, my mom's taking care of him. And then my the boyfriend's mother's taking care of him. And then, you know, my auntie down the street and then my cousin and my sister. And then it's my turn. And we just keep passing the baby around, which is great because children definitely need to know um, that village to raise them. But according to Margaret Mailer, that's a concern because I haven't had that one person, that one object to bond with. So um, as we look at children who grow up and, and mom, and again, you know, mom started young or mom wasn't able to do that. Um, we really look at then some kids who have reactive attachment disorder. We look at, according to Mailer, maybe even she's all the borderline narcissist. All of those things came from not having that one person to bond with. Um, so again, this is Margaret Mailer's theory. And once we're studying for the test, what you're learning is Margaret Mailer's words. And Margaret Mailer, her words are autism or sometimes fusion, symbiosis, symbiotic relationship, separation identification. I'm sorry, separation and ad individuation and uh, differentiation. That's when baby knows that it's separate. So then practicing period of learning to walk. A reapproachment is the ones that you'll see on the test, reapproachment and object constancy. So object constancy is what I'm hoping to develop that I know no matter what happens in life, no matter where I go, unconsciously somebody's got my back. Okay. Um, a little just side note. So if you want to Google and look it up, so reattachment, I'm sorry. So the, um, Attachment disorder, um, it's been around for a long time. We know that babies that grew, grew up in orphanages or didn't have that one person did, had that failure to attach. About 15 years ago, there was a, a theory where you kind of rebirthed the baby. Um, it was deemed a, a kid child, actually, um, and we don't use it anymore because definitely it was unethical and it wasn't empirical based. Um, but it's a kind of a little bit exciting research if that helps you remember this theory. Um, their theory was that since that when the baby came out and, and these kids weren't with their biological parents, that if they could rebirth them, they'd wrap them up in some kind of uh, sleeping blanket or something, you know, that re that was supposed to um, remind us of being in utero. And then the volunteers would kind of push the kid out. And the thought is that once the baby came out, then they would see that mom first thing. Um, and then they would uh, bond with that person immediately. So that's kind of what that theory looked like. And if you have time, go ahead and Google it and check it out. It's not a test question, um, but I like to throw in just some things, some anecdotals that might help you remember the importance of Margaret Mather or some terms. So object permanency, I'm going to look for the ball. That is Piaget. Object constancy, internally, unconsciously, I know that no matter how far I go, that someone's always got my back. Someone's always going to take care of me. Thanks, guys, for that brief, uh, uh, short video, right, on Margaret Mailer. Hope you found that helpful. Have a great one, guys. Bye.